the ROS vehicular traffic model. Um, and I'm going to spend most of my time today kind of talking about how to construct um, a model for an optimistic, optimistic parallel system. Um, let's get into it. Um, okay, so basically, what my, what my project does is it models traffic. Um, and one problem with this is um, modeling traffic jams. Um, so you, you essentially don't want cars to, there to be too many cars on the road um, because that's not how traffic works. So uh, the way my system works is it, it uh, each car, when it's generated, has like a relative to itself to wherever it starts. So say it starts here in, on the 1-1 one, one, um, node. It has a relative uh, destination that it wants to get to. So it has a, an X and a Y right here. Um, and X is going to be positive, Y is going to be negative because that's just how the coordinates are set up. Um, and as it moves, those, those variables change. And when it gets to zero, zero, it's at its destination. Um, so kind of how I thought to put together an algorithm to simulate how a typical person would drive is to try to, in either the X or Y direction, or north and south and east and west, um, it would try to get closer to it, to its destination, before it goes away, because that just makes sense. And then once it's it's gone, you can see here, um, it would it might try to go um, in the x direction first, and then the y direction, and then you see it goes away from all the traffic jam, and then it just continues straight south. It doesn't go back to east and west again because uh, most people just keep driving in the direction they are until they get to a, a logical place to turn, um, which is kind of how this works. Um, so how this. How do you code this, essentially? Um, an optimistic uh, simulation is coded in events. So um, the simulation processes different events. Um, and once an event is processed, it schedules another event in the future. Um, so this is kind of a, a diagram that I uh, mocked up as how this was going to work. Um, so the, the main guts of the program is the direction choice um, event in which basically the car has to choose between uh, four cardinal directions, north, south, east, or west, um, and then between three lanes, uh, you know, a left turning lane, a center lane, go straight, and a right turning lane. Um, we'll get into that a little bit later. It's a little bit more complicated. Um, so the colors here represent um, the, the node that the um, event is getting created on. And the arrows represent which node, which, uh, which node the event is going to be executed on. Um, so you can see it here between the red and the blue. This is how I simulate a traffic jam. Um, and the reason for this is because when you have an optimistic model, you can't, you need to, you need to um, create these events in, with enough time for the system to be able to process them without having to do a rollback. So you want to try to give it as much time before the event needs to be executed as you can. Um, so rather than having some kind of wait event that would uh, basically, uh, or um, some kind of like Boolean jam event telling the, all the surrounding nodes that that intersection is jammed, um, because the problem with that is, is that that needs to be instantaneous, which is going to cause all the nodes that are surrounding it to do a rollback, because they're going to have missed that event. Um, so what I do instead is, no matter what happens, I send the car off. And if the node, when it gets there, happens to be jammed, it sends it back. So basically you have cars in jams just going back and forth between two nodes, which is similar to a car just waiting between two nodes. Um, so here you can see the car might go between the red and the blue nodes a few times. Um, I have a counter to keep track of how many times it bounces before it tries to pick an opposite direction moving uh, away from its destination to try to avoid the jam which is uh, represented by the yellow node here. Um, so this is um, kind of more, more of the same uh, general idea, just using, this is um, a previous version, more simple version of how my nodes are set up. Um, these are all set up in structs because um, the ROS, the, the uh, simulator that I'm using is C, so no classes. Um, so here's kind of how it, how it works. There's, um, you don't need necessarily uh, to keep track of all these cars. Um, 
They're kept, Ross keeps track of them for you, so you don't need to worry about putting things in arrays or uh, queues or anything. It'll just keep track of them. Um, and what I use are counters for all of the um, for all of the, the lanes coming out. Um, and you can see here is uh, the newer version of how this works. Um, and there's um, an explanation of what what this kind of means on, on my blog. I'm going to explain it now. You can go back and reread it later if you're really interested and if I don't quite explain this uh, too well. So this is kind of an example of how this, this works. Um, the, this is at a direction uh, uh, select event. This is, this is what's going to occur. Um, the car is sitting in the incoming right lane on the east. Um, and all these lanes, all the lanes are labeled um, it, with respect to what side of the intersection they're on. So even though these, so these are, this car is going to move westward, it's still the east lane. Um, I thought it would be easy to, to keep track of it that way. It turns out it's, it's confusing, confusing I don't know, no matter how, how you label them. Um, so anyway, it's sitting in the blue, the blue lane. Um, the implications of this are that it wants to turn right. It wants to go north at this lane, or at this, this intersection. Um, so, so then it kind of cuts down half the work you, have, you need to do. You don't need to choose the cardinal direction. It's already chosen, been chosen by the, the direction select uh, that happened before that. Um, so now it needs to decide, it's going north, it needs to decide if it wants to go right on the next lane, left on the next lane, or continue straight. Um, and the way I do this is with, with again, those, uh, the variables with the relative uh, distance of the destination. Um, and then that's, that's basically how they're done. So in order to simulate a jam, these, all these three outgoing lanes have counters. Um, and you can set the max amount of cars on a road, which will simulate essentially how long they are. Um, and so if all those three roads, um, or, or the, the, the one of interest that you want to try to turn onto is full, um, it'll have to turn back around and it'll put it back into one of these um, also east lanes, east outgoing lanes. Um, from here, the, the way that this it, it just works as to none of these are going to be uh, full. Um, just it's it kind of I did a lot of kind of math and logic to, to try to make sure that it was never going to be full, and I'm pretty sure it'll be okay. Um, I haven't been able to test it quite yet, um, so I'll have I'll have results posted hopefully by next week onto whether or not this works. Um, but it, it seems like it will. Um, okay, so. Now, now is the tricky part, is when you need to send it back to the lane it came from, or to the node it came from, to some of traffic jam, you need to know, because you don't want to send it back into a lane coming back in a direction that it didn't come from, um, just because that's, you know, uh, kind of how my idea of a, a traffic jam would work. Um, so you need to know, in the previous, uh, the previous intersection of which direction it came from, um, which is also another variable I have um, of you can determine which direction it came from by which lane it was in when it came in. Right turning, center lane, or left turning lane. Um, and you can see how that kind of works. Um, because, okay, so, so if it comes in from the right lane, it has three, three possible lanes it could have come in through. Um, the, the north lane, the north right turning lane, the uh, east center lane, or the south left turning lane, or it possibly could have been bounced back. Um, which isn't in this diagram, but that's a possibility. Um, so it keeps track of those lanes, and based on those, it determines whether it's going to put it in the left outgoing east lane, the center lane, or the right lane. Um, so that's basically how how this works, and uh, I hope that gives you kind of a better understanding on how uh, you have to kind of write these simulations. Um, I mean, it would have been a lot easier to write a weight event that would, you know, just if there are too many cars, just wait. But that would have killed the, uh, the um, efficiency of this, of this model because that's just not how you write um, simulations on an optimistic model. Um, so what's next? Um, in order to test this, I got it to compile um, last week and I just haven't had a chance to really test it um, because I still need to write map generation, which is if you look on Again, I have a bunch of links posted to the Ross website. Um, there's some examples of that that I just kind of have to uh, 
uh, change around a little bit so that it'll work for mine. Um, reverse computation and analyze results. And that's kind of my goals for the semester. Um, and the last thing I want to talk about really quick is rollbacks. Um, this is one of the, the challenges of this project is that you need to know how to, um, essentially you need as much information as you can about what happened in the event that you need to undo um, to be able to effectively undo it correctly and have your program not crash. Um, and the way this is done is with um, bit fields, in ROS at least, um, where it just kind of gives you a bit field and you can do whatever you want with it. Um, and then when you reverse compute it, you can use kind of case statements, um, if statements, you know, whatever, whatever you want. Um, so when so when you're doing your forward computing, you need to set all your bits in your bit, bit field accordingly. So that when you go back, you can kind of extract all that information um, so you know what happened and you can undo it. Um, and that's, that's a, just a, a rollback. So that's the last thing uh, before it, this is completely working. Um, and then thanks to everybody who was an awesome help on this project. And thanks a lot. Any, any questions? You said that when the car goes into an intersection that already has a car in it, it goes back. Why did you choose to make it go back and wait instead of taking another route? Okay, so um, I just thought my my algorithm um, it it okay. So when when you're driving on a road, you know you don't necessarily if you if you can't go in the direction that you want to, you don't necessarily immediately choose a different direction to go in. You'll usually sit there at the light, you know, or sit there in traffic for, for a little bit for uh, before you decide, you know, get really fed up and decide to try to uh, cut around it, um, which is trying to what I'm trying to simulate with my model. Um, so it's going to bounce back between two uh, two intersections for a few times before it tries to reroute. And that's kind of back to back to this this slide where it's going to bounce back between uh, this first blue one it will begin and those red ones. It's going to bounce back between those a few times. It's going to count up and get annoyed and go around, um, is, is the general idea for this algorithm. So I actually didn't understand this, this diagram. So what is each square there? Each square here is, is an intersection. It's a little bit weird because um, I, I didn't really know. I don't, I don't want to draw a lot of those little circles kind of and label them all. But um, each one of these uh, squares represents an intersection. Um, and then the arrows represent uh, where the car is going. So you can see it, it kind of starts at this 1-1 one, one square, bounces to the 2-1 uh, square, bounces back. Um, it, it kind of gives you like a graphical representation of uh, how, how the car will travel to get to its destination in this situation. Yes? So, so currently it looks very, um, I guess, like New York? Yeah. Um, right, so, so, <clears throat> so four, four way intersections in a grid. And I realize mm -hmm. this is maybe more grid than you intended, but yeah. this one is more grid. So, like, um, a lot of traffic comes from, say, there was like an accident or um, not like a four way intersection, but an on ramp with a single lane, or mm -hmm. off ramp, uh, with, a sing with a single lane, and one's trying to get out of that off ramp. Um, are you planning on adding that sort of thing? Um, not that New York City traffic is an interesting right. thing. But right. No, of course. Um, well, setting up is an interesting Yeah. Um, so, so that's kind of towards the map generate um, that I, that I have looked at. Um, I haven't really gotten really deep into into how far you can, how much you can really control with it. Um, I, I'm pretty sure you can kind of. Um, it 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 works off like random numbers and probability and, and kind of randomly generates the map, so you don't have to design because um, these things get. To be you know millions of intersections and stuff like that. Um, so I, I think what you can do is have you know probabilities of, of really like heavy traffic generating intersections um, to roughly simulate it. Um, I think you know designing like uh, like highways and stuff like that, um, having the map function generate you know like super highways with with maybe um, more you know possible cars on the lanes and stuff like that and generate more traffic. I, I think that's possible. Have you, ever, um, have you ever heard of, this is kind of weird, but have you ever heard of the video game Darwinia? No. Okay, well, these guys made a game called Darwinia. The reason I'm bringing that one up is because the other game that I'm actually talking about here is called Subversion. Yeah, I know. Um, <laughs> uh, and so they made, um, it's a procedurally generated like city generator. Um, mm -hmm. It makes some, like, it's, it's not like a script 
related to this, but um, it generates like really realistic, not not realistic, it's not photorealistic, it's like abstract, you know, it's like wireframe stuff, right. but like really genuine looking city lab um, with like, you know, different kinds of like avenues, <coughs> like alleys and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but it's called, it's called Subversion. Yeah, I'll have to look at that. I really okay, want to look at Darwin and you won't find it if you look for Subversion. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so yeah, that gets into, I really do want to look up a way to to kind of use map generating and use, yeah, kind of change my classes to, to allow for more of a, a like a, a really genuine city layout. So, as watching some Borelli's new conference videos, so they, what they said is current version of TPS is all class A, it's you, but you are in a place where there is traffic jam. All you want to do is, that you, have, you have to have an advanced warning that there is going to be a traffic jam, and then you plan it accordingly. So what you could think of is put all these things in a small process. Well, like, you just use the GPS. What about like taking data from OpenStreetMap and just like instead of generating, right, like, yeah. so taking like taking Manhattan and just like yeah. yeah. But what what would almost be kind of cool is to to use this maybe get I don't know how how GPS works exactly. Um, at least the ones that you have in your car. Maybe like fetch information from those and from from traffic data and then run. Really quick, like short, you know, maybe like 10 steps or 15 steps. Send it back. Yeah, send it back, get a result, and, and that's, that's anticipate traffic jams would be really cool. So, so, can you give like the three sentence, what is the point of these simulations? Like, what are you trying to. to the learn? point of this simulation, the traffic in, my, in, in the whole scheme of my project, the traffic really isn't important. It's more about performance um, evaluation on optimistic models. Um, I just want to use traffic as an, an example. It's really easy to explain, and it's really easy to show how you can optimize it from, you know, using weight events to how you can change it to to effectively simulate the same thing, but take advantage of the optimism. Come on. So, Nate, like, it doesn't yeah. sound like he cares about it, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. 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 yeah, no, maybe you totally, yeah. About making maps and stuff, and yeah. Okay. it's just like a... <laughs> yeah, I don't know. If anybody wants to do this with the, this project, though, you're welcome. Yeah, it would be cool to have, yeah. have someone else do that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Dosh? Right. Yeah. Dosh, 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 on my blog that you can read. I'll, I'll post another link to it. Um, I'm not sure if it's there. But but yeah, their model used used traffic lights to control the traffic flow. And uh, it got, they, they were talking about how it was getting really complicated to, to kind of use that kind of model. Um, and and police, um, that, that gets into more, that's like an instantaneous thing, which is hard for optimistic models to simulate. Um, I know you could kind of like have have them set up in the future, um, what I was thinking of, um, have like an event, set it up, and then have everything be prepared for the police to come, slow it down, you know, uh, just take down the number of cars that can be on the lane, something like that. Um, again, none of this is, is really um, detailed and, and really, it, it's kind of ways to, to simulate things without actually s simulating them, how, how they actually happen in real life, more of ways to kind of model them uh, that, that are, um, efficient for an optimistic simulation. So that'd be yeah, that'd be a cool case to kind of put to to, to uh, evaluate performance on. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to. Say.